2020. Why celebrate life? We have enjoyed this past weekend the onset of Passover and the observance of Easter, starting with the solemnness of Good Friday. Passover and Easter are intimately connected, whether the world knows it or not. The blood on the door frames of the Israelites in Egypt was done to preserve the life of the firstborn during the final plague on Egypt to release the Israelites from captivity and enslavement so that they could migrate to the promised land, the Exodus story as it were. Jesus was in Jerusalem 1,200 years later for the Passover, and it was on that Sabbath he was crucified. His head wounded and his arms outstretched with nails, the blood stains on the cross emulate the position of the lamb's blood on the doors that night the angel of death was sent over Egypt. The flawless lamb was sacrificed so the firstborn would be spared death as the angel of death passed over the land of Egypt. The sinless lamb of God, Jesus, was sacrificed so that all humanity would have the opportunity to be spared death, death from the sinful nature we're born with. That death in nature separates us from God. Jesus' act on the cross provides the reconciliation for us, Jew and Gentile, to be restored to God when we do die here on earth. So we celebrate life. On Easter Sunday morning, we celebrate that the tomb was empty and death could not hold our Savior. He overcame death and as such paid the price for all of us. Passover celebrates the spared lives of the firstborn, overcoming the death that passed over Egypt some 1,200 years or so before Jesus' act on the cross. Passover and Easter don't always overlap on our modern calendars, but this year they do. And spring always brings us a renewed sense of celebration, a celebration of life as nature comes alive again, trees fan out, flowers bloom. We enjoy the birth of various things in nature, birds, bunnies, critters in the forest. So why not celebrate the lives of children? The Jerusalem Connection is dedicated to supporting the efforts to preserve the lives of children, babies, and in that specific mission to aid Israel and the Jewish people, we provide those resources to Biat Kaim, an organization in Israel dedicated to help women who find themselves in a crisis of an unplanned pregnancy. Working with the community and spreading their message via social media, word of mouth, flyers, even billboards, Biat Kaim offers tangible help to women who are confused, scared, and often shunned or set aside by their partners and family. Offering counseling and material help, as well as prayer, Bad Kaim assists mom during their entire pregnancy journey and after the baby is born with material and counseling help. Sandy Shoshana leads these efforts. She's a close personal friend of our late founders, Jim and Pat Hutchins. They were part of her journey to know Jesus Yeshua as Messiah. I met Sandy during one of my own trips to Israel over a decade ago. My heart nearly bursts with joy when I see their monthly newsletters and various Facebook posts of women and their beautiful babies who are celebrating life because of the assistance of Biat Kaim. I invite you to be part of those efforts. You can be part of the blessing that women and children in Israel take part in through the work of Biat Kaim. Consider a recurring or one-time donation to Operation Life. You can find it on our website. Your contribution will go directly to Biat Kaim and be used efficiently and joyfully to continue the efforts to encourage women to choose life and dissuade the choice of abortion. Showing women one at a time that hope and life are within their grasps and God is there to comfort them. Shavuot Tov. Have a blessed day.